Buddha asked the monks to dwell in the forest, out of sight of people and out of sound of people. This is one cool forest monastery, and in fact, it's not just cool, it's cold. <laughs> <laughs> We're at 1,200 meters, and so the winters are much longer up here. We're near the hottest city in Canada, so it's mercifully cooler in the summer and also cooler in the winter. Monks living in the forest, wherever they are in the world, end up see, being in the midst of this ecological web, and we're very careful to not disturb the balance of this. Buddhist monks are not permitted to kill conscious beings. They're not even permitted to actually kill plants. And so they have to harmonize. Organisms like trees and squirrels are actually interacting with each other. A few years back, we noticed that the pine trees were missing big chunks of bark off them. And we couldn't figure this out. Finally, we see it's the squirrels actually taking them off. And we're like, why are they doing this? It's because there was a drought that year. So they're actually needing the moisture under the bark. But when they do that, they actually end up killing the tree. But this has another effect, you know, more distribution of pine cones and so forth. So it all has the circling effect. You keep seeing this interaction, the bears, the moose, bobcats. Have to devise ways to live with them. It's quite harmonious. They say that no monk has ever been eaten by a tiger. One cultivates loving kindness as an attitude to the wildlife around you, and that's how you protect yourself. You are not something else than nature. If you regard yourself as something else, then bad things happen. Can you spend a day alone in a garden? If we don't appreciate that, the joy of this interaction with nature, we're going to get kicked out. We won't be able to find our way back in.